and you pull that out of case, you you had better come correct. I get enough crap for the guitars <laughs> I have now, let alone that. But I I think my favorite BC Rich story was what Harry Shear, the guy who played Derek Smalls mm -hmm. on Spinal Tap. Yeah, he was at the like the BC Rich. I don't know store in in Hollywood or whatever it was before that they made that movie and and he bought that double neck and the one that he played on the uh, the movie is actually an eight string and a four string but um, are we going but but um, but he he was talking about there was one that was just two identical four strings right. he's like why would anybody want that and the guy goes. Cause it's a double neck. <laughs> You're right. And he took out his, took out his credit card and bought it right there. I guess. Hey everybody. This is Matt. We're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thank you for watching. It is Thursday. It is our time for primetime guitar live. We do it every Thursday at five o'clock mountain time. Your time may vary. Your mileage may vary. My co-host may vary, especially this week. It's usually always Chris, but Chris has taken the uh, week off. He actually came in uh, yesterday, but he yep. took the most of the week off. He's um, he's still recovering from um, uh, from our last workshop. Um, I'm taking a vacation this week too by coming into the shop. <laughs> so yeah. So to my left, your right is my friend Jim Jam Jimmy, the one, the only, the uh, the the constant. Uh, 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 Constant pain in my guitar, but no, no, my very, very good friend Jim Jam Jimmy is here. And uh Jim, how are let's do it just like if you were Chris. Okay, wait. Yeah. Okay, ask me again. Okay. So Jim, how have you been this week? I'm fine. <laughs> how are you, Matt? <laughs> Chris Fesker, always imitated, never duplicated. Often, often imitated. Yeah, that's yeah. right. No, it's um, uh, Chris and I have have a rapport on the uh, on the live stream and uh, and you and I have a rapport on the live stream. So anyway, so uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We have been very busy this week with something that was just kind of a joke. And then we both kind of started taking it seriously and then it became bigger than both of us. Wouldn't you say? First of all, you are a maniac. Yes. I was in here on and off all last week, mm -hmm. um, just checking, you know, seeing what the guys are doing. I saw what went down in that class. Yeah. It was a major, major undertaking. Yeah. <laughs> Those guitars all seven days. And I know you guys were wiped out by, by Sunday. You insisted. Uh -huh, I did. That you and I, I did. are going to come in this week. I was half joking around about it. And then I thought, you know, that's a pretty good idea. Well, I mean... We're not getting here at the crack of dawn no. either, but um, but to take on more neck throughs. Mm -hmm. All we've been here since Monday. Yeah, working every day and going at it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. You're a nut. So you've been you've worked with me on a bunch of guitar projects, but never a neck through. Correct. And I haven't. I've made lots of neck throughs, but not like it's not what I choose to make all the time. So. Um, what I what I, I I made a bunch of neck throughs prior to the last week's workshop. We made a bunch of neck throughs at last week's workshop, and I rem, I recognized some things. I'm like, you know what? I want to do that differently in the May workshop. For all I know, no one's making one in May. I, I'm pretty sure somebody is, but I wanted to I wanted to try some stuff out, and so we thought, let's take a week or however long it is, and make four neck throughs, three guitars. So, but first, let's take a quick you super chat. Math. You do the math. <laughs> but first, let's take a quick super chat from our good friend and sponsor, Brian Duncan, who says, can't wait to see them. How are they coming? Um, There was so much guitar sex in this shop today, I could... Barely stay. It was pretty nuts. Yeah. It's um you, Brian, when you see them, you better get the birth control. That's just all I can say. I agree. Um, the uh, uh so so what we are making is um 
Uh, and by the way, this reminds me of something, a segue. What we're making is three BC Rich Bitch guitars. One of them is a bass. One of them is a double neck. And I have no idea why we're doing it, frankly. But it reminds me, um, my friend uh, John, you know as J Van B, has a buddy at Zim's Guitar uh, 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 Shop in Scottsdale, Arizona, I think is where he lives. And um, he uh, he sent me some videos. He went to Zim's Guitar Shop and they did a couple videos. One was the telly that John built when he was out here. Oh, it has to be years ago now. And a challenger that is um, one of the original challengers. I know because it's got a bridge that we have a bunch of, but no longer use. Um, so John got one of the last ones of those. And um, uh, Zay, Zim is the guy who, who runs the John, I think. Yeah. Yes, yeah, John. Yes, yeah, John. Well, hey, John. So anyway, um, so if you are, if you know uh, Zim's guitar YouTube channel, uh, check it out. Um, and, uh, 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 there, there's, it's a couple of, uh, it's about a half hour, maybe an hour of Texas toasty goodness on, uh, on Zim's guitar. So thank you for John for doing that and helping us out with that. And, um, thank you to Zim's guitars for, for doing that too. That was a cool thing. Let's take a super chat from doc who says, show me all your bitches. Well, well, that's as a, well as you know, Doc. They really don't look like guitars. I mean, four days of going at it, mm -hmm. they, they don't have wings on them yet. Mm -hmm. So they really don't look like guitars yet. No, they just sort of look like necks with with two feet of extra neck meat yeah. on the ass end of it. Um, Doug Cook says uh, hashtag or pound sign. Still waiting at JJJ. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> Okay. All right. What's it say? It says still it says hashtag still waiting at JJJ, whatever that means. Oh, so. Doug Cook said that? Oh no, he he wants me to come out and play in Ohio. That's, oh, that's okay. why he's saying that. Yeah. All right, good. If Matt drives me, I will come out. I am Ohio the last thing I'm gonna do is drive. You don't want to go on the road with me? It's not even on the list of stuff I want to do driving to Ohio. We could be like Waylon and Willie. We could be, or Thelma and Louise. Yes. Um, Our so, livers would make it like yes, one day. Yes, <laughs> yes. So um, anyway, so we are we are diligently working, and there was a handful of things that I wanted to try. A few things I wanted to do differently. One of the nice things is um, we uh, we're we're making all BC rich bitches, which anytime you get one guy making one thing and one guy making another and guy number three making something completely different. It, you have to kind of rethink all that stuff. The downside is that the BC rich bitch body comes in a bunch of different sizes and you add another neck to one and it's a, it, you might, it's a, it's a whole new thing. So, mm -hmm. but we, we did a bunch of good stuff, did a bunch of neat things that I am glad that we were able to test some theories before the, um, I thought I had, I thought I had officially uh, figured out exactly how I wanted to do And I did, but there was a handful of things that like the real problem and anyone who was there, uh, uh, Doc, Dave, Doug, or Sean will tell you that the real secret to building a double neck is the order of operations. And if you get something out of order, it's not like you can't bounce back from it, but it's just makes life a little more difficult. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the, the point you brought up was um, because we're trying to make these all the same pretty mm -hmm. much. Um, you had the drill press set, you had the router set, you mm -hmm. had the pin router set, you know. So if something did go astray, everything was still set up. We'd go yeah. right back to it and duplicate it in a hurry. Yeah. Yeah. So everything was done in steps, all four of them at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and there was a handful of things that, you know, we had to make some fretboards a couple of times. And mm -hmm. we had to go to the hardwood store to get a handful of extra rosewood because we had some rosewood issues. And I, I wasn't going to let go. Well, these... Three will have this kind of rosewood, and this one will have a different. No, no, no. They want them to all yep. look the same. So, yep. and they do. Mm -hmm. So we're going with maple, uh, maple neck through sections, rosewood fingerboard, and mahogany wings. And I think that Sean, uh, who did the same thing with his BC Rich guitar that he built last time he was out here, 
Um, Which turned out killer. Really excellent. I still don't know how we're going to paint these things. When when will you be able to see them? Hmm. Well. And why is it going to be when you force Noah and Mark? Oh, to I see. Yeah. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Um, well, you might. You tell me whether they're going to be able to see them at this date. You c maybe could see them May 19th at Odyssey Beer Works for their 10th anniversary yeah. with Hawk Attack. There's no way in hell they'll be ready. By okay, then you're not going to see them then. Yeah. And yeah. you're definitely not going to see them with JJJ's band <laughs> the next day at Odyssey Beer Works for their 10th Hey, you know what that makes me think of? Hmm. Makes me think of Kevin Kiki Kaloje and Tommy TT Kaloje. <laughs> They, I don't know if Tommy does, but but he but he might. Does he do that too, or does Kiki uh, no, do that? That's Kiki's thing. TT doesn't do that. No. Okay. All right. TT just makes fun of Kiki. <laughs> I can see that. How do you make fun of Kiki? Now that I think about it. Huh. Yeah. Come on. Will Kiki be over at your place this weekend? Um. There's a distinct possibility. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, cool. Is, is there cold beer? Yes, there is. Kiki will probably be over. Excellent. We're grinding meat on Saturday. Is that a euphemism for something? Or are you actually no, grinding actually, meat? Okay, I'm, yeah. We're actually grinding meat. Okay, all right. Um, all right, so back to double double necks and neck through. So yeah. um, doing a neck through project is, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that because I have made as many set necks as I have. And because I have made as many bolt on necks as I have, some of them double necks, the neck through build process is the hardest thing for me to do because I'm not used to it. And I think it, I, I think that it is the hardest guitar, electric guitar, solid body thing that you could do. Sans like Brian Duncan was saying neck through carved top. I mean, you could, you could make a, a neck through even more complicated, but, but I think the neck through is far and away the last guitar you should build if you're just starting out. Well, for sure. Because like I said, here's day four. Mm -hmm. They still look just like a center block of wood mm -hmm. with a neck on them. I didn't get a rise till we just glued those two necks together. We glued the necks and the so, center section yeah, yeah. together. Yeah. Um, and that's was like, Oh, Oh, I get it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the the um, you, we we've been talking a lot though about neck throughs. Like, why would anybody want a neck through? This is where the audience participation comes in. Only fifteen minutes into the program. Um, what on earth is the reason for a neck through? Anything like, why would anybody want that? I don't know. Let the guys tell us. All right. Let, let the guys that built them last week tell us. Yeah. So if you guys have uh, Paul or Sean, Sean Join says it's a challenge. Um, Doug Cook says it's on my to do list, but not for a little bit. Um, uh, Brian Duncan says challenge accepted. Um, uh, Brad Pedal to the Metal Guitar says evening, Matt. Glad you drug JJJ out of retirement. Thanks for <laughs> all the consulting work. Well, you're very welcome, Brad. Um, lefty O says, just because Todd Kuzma says, cause they're cool. And I, I, you know what? I get it. Cool things are cool because they're cool. And there should be no other reason to do something. If, if it's cool is, is, is one of them, but, but I would like to know what you guys think. There is one, there's one thing that I can think of that is absolutely the only thing that I can think of why anybody would make a neck through guitar. And it is if the neck joint is not possible any other way, or the neck joint isn't as strong in any other way. Good Case point. in point, the the uh, the Gibson SG should have been a neck through, and the Firebird absolutely is is it's a good thing it's a neck through, given the way that the neck joins the body and where the neck joins the body. Now, do you hear that? It's the feverish clicking of keys. People go, oh, you get more sustain if you get the bridge of the same. Ah, whatever. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't buy any of that. But um, but if you it seems like a very theoretical thing. You Tone know, wood, baby. Tone wood. Yeah. It seems to me like 24 frets. Or and the, and and people hear that. That's the feverish clicking. And people go, well, the natural no, blah, 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 Fine, fine. I don't, yeah, I don't care. But yeah, the 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 um, 
Uh, the neck through is, is a fun project. It's a cool project. I think it looks neat. Um, and if you paint over a neck through so that you can't tell it's a neck through, you'll burn in hell. Yeah. What's the, I don't know what, yeah. What is the point of it? Yeah. Yeah. Why go to all that trouble? Yeah. 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 You'll at least smoke a turd in hell. That's what, yeah. Okay. Let's take some, uh, let's take some viewer mail. Okay. Um, so Sean says for me, smoother transition when you get up the fretboard. Um, let's see. Uh, oh man, it's coming. They're coming in fast and furious. Doc says he's always wanted to do one and he'd rather build one. Uh, it's a bucket list item. That's a cool, that's a cool reason to do it. Um, Van Shank says he's not in any rush to start a neck through. Uh, Chris Hendricks says when you're right, you're right, Matt. Thank you, Chris. Uh, the only neck through I have was only for lack of a neck heel. Yeah. So Vinny, that's, that's kind of what we were talking about. Like if, if the neck that you, the neck joint that you want is only possible with the neck through that's, that's really the best reason to, uh, to do it. Oh, bless you. Um, Lauren court says there has to be some tone magic having the pickups under the neck wood. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't think so, but, but maybe, um, um, uh, Paul McNary says, you ask someone who wears a Rolex instead of a Timex why they wear a Rolex. The answer has always been they can. That I mean, these are these are all legitimate reasons. Like if anyone starts spouting off tone, this, that, and the other, I just kind of go. But if someone goes, I think it's cool, fine. If you wave that second flag, second cool flag, happy meal. I will absolutely, positively be glad to uh, to to say Let's do it because it's just because it's cool. Absolutely. So there's one thing to buy one. There's another thing to make one. Yes, it is. So what have what have you? So I found out. <laughs> what do you think about? So when for the guys coming out to do because we have a a, a neck through workshop in uh, mm. next month or this month. We have another one in September. We have we have there's a bunch of them, and um, a lot of them are full. I think that the September one still has dates and the. Uh, uh, maybe there's one, one, one more that, that still has some openings, but what do you, what's your advice, Jim, for everyone who wants to come out and do this because it's cool or because of tone or because be prepared to get challenged mentally because um, there's so many things you have to think about in it yeah. on that, just that center block of wood, you know, yeah. everything has to be spot on. Yeah. Um, in especially with the double neck. Yeah. We're how many times do we just sit here and just talk about it? Uh -huh. You know, what are we gonna do there? You know, oh remember now we got a route for the for the wires and you know yeah. and and God knows 80 zillion other things we talked about. One thing that I will I, I can guarantee you is that it is impossible to pull the neck and drill from one pickup to the next. Yeah, you cannot do that on a neck through. Right. Yeah. You kind of gotta think about all that stuff in advance and uh have your wiring races ready to go and and yeah. So here we are, day four mm -hmm. in the next on the double neck anyway. We're mm -hmm. shaped today. Um yeah, the headstocks, everything, everything to do with the neck was pretty much done today. We fretted everything this morning. Um, and then finally got to glue that. What like three o'clock this afternoon? Three, yeah, three o'clock. We started gluing it um, up. Yeah. So just be prepared for a lot of work early on and you don't see a lot of result out of it. That's a, you, do you think we should have like a little mini reveal tomorrow at some point? Of yeah, what why don't we? yeah. Why don't we do yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. I, I think it'd be interesting. I mean, the guys that were in the class uh, yeah. last week, obviously know um, where they were at this stage of the game. Um, but yeah, I think it would be kind of cool to show off um, what we've done up to this point. Cause we've been getting after it. Doc says that he thinks that his firebird is the guitar that he's the most proud of out of the ones he's made. Uh, it's as cool as it gets. Yeah, it, it it is all of the guitars that got made last week. Raul and Brian, Doug, Dave, Doc, and Sean all made really excellent instruments. Like gorgeous. Like there's just something about that workshop that I I think maybe the 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 bar was raised a little bit. You guys you know? stepped up your game huge. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. 
Uh, here's a here's a, a super chat for you, Jim. Uh, it's from Van Shank Guitars. It says, "How's retirement treating you, Jim Jam Jimmy?" Um, well, thank you. Uh, retirement. Anybody that is retired on the, on the chat, I think you know that um, it takes a little bit to get used to. Um, that sounds like oh, you know, oh, how hard is that? No, it does take you know not getting up at the same time anymore and mm -hmm. um, getting to sleep in a little bit. Um, and then kind of find a new routine in your life. And um, all I, I have, I have, I have one word for everybody: <laughs> Ted Nugent, Tommy Shaw, oh, Jack yeah. Blades, and some guy on drums. Guess who we not saw last who night? We saw last night. Yeah. yeah, we did not see. Yeah, that damn Yankees. We did not see that. We did see yeah. a damn Yankees. Yes, we did, and it wasn't a tribute band. It was a lot of baseball players dancing around. Yes, high leg kicks. Yes. Yeah. Brian Duncan asks two questions. One, reveal tomorrow. I think we should. Yeah, yeah, we will. Two, is anybody in the shop Saturday? I, well, no. you know, you know, Brian, I don't think so. Unless Joy wants to come in and sand. I'm getting. Aren't you going to come over and grind me? Yes. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to come over and, uh, and, and watch you guys do that. And take part in the end result. Yeah. Yeah. So what are you making? Snack sticks. Mmm. Yep. That sounds to good. go in Bloody Marys. Ooh. Can you just have them? Is that what you normally put? Like the ones that you guys put in the Bloody Marys? The the yeah. Like a it's like a slim jim, right? Yeah, kind of yeah. without the casing. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna make a like 20 pounds of those. Wow. Yep. What kind of that's what you... I do in retirement. Oh, I make there snack you go. sticks and barbecue Ooh. and you know, build guitars with Pendejo. Yeah, yeah. The Pendejo brothers at it again. Yeah. And then go to you know, plays, Broadway sure. plays. Hey man, I like the theater. I had a good time. And um, you know what? I like, I like, I like going to do stuff. I like doing stuff is fun. It, doing stuff is more fun than not doing stuff. I would agree with that. You know, what was really fun about that. What's that? You could have adult beverages mm -hmm. that we play. We had $150 worth. Oh, they were not <laughs> No, they cheap. weren't giving them they away. They were not yeah. cheap. Yeah. Good Lord, man. Yeah. 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 All right, so all right, let's see what everybody. Lauren Court says that the um, uh, the Jackson Randy Rhodes V is absolutely a good use of the neck through. I couldn't agree more. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um, ben Duncan says, yeah, the last batch was super cool. The warlock was unbelievably sick. Ben is uh, uh, Ben likes to say this. Why are you doing that, Ben? Cause metal. That's that's Ben. Yes, is that his thing? Uh, well, that was the thing that he said okay. to me one time. Um, but I think that he likes the, uh, the, the, the pointy guitars maybe and the Floyds and the, this, mm -hmm. so we'll, well, I'm looking forward to seeing what Ben does when he comes out in September. Doug Cook asks, Matt, which spiral bit do you use on the pin router up, down or compression? Yes. Whatever I can get a hold of, I will use for the pin router. Um, we have a really excellent bit that slings crap everywhere now. So that's probably, uh, an upcut it drags the chips out of the um out of the out of the piece and flings them every which way um i like um i like them all you know some of them I, here's the thing if it turns the uh, the wood into little teeny tiny shavings i like it as soon as it doesn't do that i throw it away i don't sharpen it i, I throw it away so yeah uh get them and and Buy them cheap and stack them deep. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what they are. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, Driddle says some parts from my build showed up today. I wonder if that is uh, Devin's going to enter the four hundred dollar. Yeah, how's guitar everybody builders. doing with their four hundred dollar build? Let's talk about that a little bit. Let's okay. let's hold on. Let's, I want to take. Uh, I want to take one question from. Um, Anna Stafford, four months after I retired, I woke up feeling strange and wondering what was wrong. That lunchtime, it came to me. I'm not tired anymore. Okay. Hey, I agree with that. Okay. So let's shift gears a little bit away from uh, neck throughs, unless you're planning on building a neck through for the $400 guitar building contest. Let's shift gears to the $400 guitar building contest a little bit. Okay. Do you, what do you know about that? Um, that it Supposed to cost four hundred bucks to yes. build your guitar. Your guitar can cost no more than four hundred dollars to complete your guitar. So you can just do anything and everything as long as it costs four hundred dollars. We're not counting you, labor. You could go to a pawn shop, buy a whatever mm -hmm. for three hundred ninety nine. Uh huh. Yep. And chop it up. 
<laughs> or or not. You or just, not. Or you, you just, just bring, you it. Just bring yeah. it here and yeah. go, ah, there you go. There you go. There's yeah. my $400. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you could go to Guitar Center and uh, buy something for some money and put a rad paint job on it. Yeah. I, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Or you could do what I hope that everyone does, and that is be challenged by the idea of like, so for example, uh, Doc and I talked about this. He's like, my the pickups and the guitars that I wanted to make were going to be more than $400. But then I found out, I realized that I could wind my own pickups. So he's like, well, crap, now I'm, wind so now he's winding his own pickups, which is neat because it's a cool thing to do. And um, it's a challenge for him, yeah. you know, and I don't, I don't know uh, what he's going to do with that down the line, but it was, uh, I can die a happy man knowing that I have challenged people to, to do cool stuff. So, um, and don't worry, I'm not, yeah, I'm not planning on leaving the, the, I'm not planning on shrugging off this mortal coil anytime soon, but, um, but I do want to, I do, I think, I do think challenging people is a, is a good idea. And Doc's pickups are muy excellente. Yeah. You have them in, in, uh, in the, the heat, heat seeker. seeker. Yes. yes, I do. Dirtle says that he is entering. What is the exact date of the contest? Um, that is, uh, that is a good question. August it's 5th? August 5th. Yeah. I think it's a Saturday or a Sunday. It's all on the, um, uh, it's all on the website. Here's my question. Yes. Is the judging in the afternoon? I don't know. Yeah. I think it'll probably be around, uh, it'd be all day, all day judging. Oh, it is. Okay. Maybe. Why not? Okay. I don't know. I'm not even sure when because it's going to start. Because I'm cooking barbecue for Odyssey that day. I don't think it's even going to start until noon or two or something. I don't Well, yeah. if that's the case, then I can come over. I almost wonder, there's no way to do this, but it would be something to like do it at Odyssey. Oh, that would be cool. Like we could have the actual guitars just go to Odyssey. That would be fun. Let's check. Nah, let's just, let's just I say we just show up. I say we just show up. Yeah. 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 Homemade boat regatta and <laughs> guitar contest at Odyssey. And Pinewood Works. Derby. And Pinewood Derby. <laughs> Yep. So, so yeah, I, so, I mean, that would be neat. I don't know if we could do that, but it's not like Odyssey's that far from the shop. Right. So, you know, we could, we could do it there. It's not like we don't have, you know, stands and stuff that we can't throw in the back of the Subaru and drive them over to, I don't know if it would work, but. Yeah. We could have a fan favorite guitar. <sighs> that would be neat. Yeah. And there would be way more beer. Oh, a lot of beer. So, so, all right. So let's, let's, let's hear from it. anywhere from 3% to 20, 30%. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Kyle Coley asks, that's interesting. I've wondered what was the best up cut down cut or compression for routing guitars. I tell you, Kyle, um, like I said, whatever, whatever you can get, uh, is, is fine. I don't, I don't think that one is better or worse than another. Um, I do use spiral bits in my pin router almost exclusively, but not because, um, and I, you know what? I, I get them from Amazon. It doesn't matter. I, cause, cause when they stop working, I just toss them. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't spend a lot of money on bits. Um, just like I said, and I'll say it again, buy them cheap and stack them deep and don't worry about it. Uh, when they go bad, they go bad. So, uh, doc says that his $400 build pickups are done. Necks are starting Saturday. Going to be a lot of work. I wonder if doc is going to do neck throughs. Now that he has the knowing of uh, neck throughs. Um, Column cost says $2 for your next Dunlop guitar pick. Why? Thank you, sir. Thank you for the super chat guys. We try to take everyone's super chat and, uh, um, and, and, and read them off to you like this one from Brian Duncan. He says, hi, Chris and Dina mind if we take over your biz. <laughs> We've done it before. Why not do it again? Yeah. Yeah. Lauren court wants to know how many entries so far. I don't know the answer, but I do know that, um, I think that we're up to like, if everybody, if everybody who said that they're coming is coming and pays the entry fee, it's going to be like, someone's going to win 2,500 bucks minimum. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. So, um, and I've got some other ones floating around here somewhere. I got money from Gary Taft and some other guys too. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, but the, here's the neat part about the $400 guitar building contest is if you sign up, Steve from Maximum Guitar Works will give you $100 worth of free templates. No brainer. We used them all week long yes, this we week. We yep. used them all week long last week. Yep. 
I, the stuff that's behind me here, the wood ones, I still have them. It's not like I'm going to toss them, but I don't use them anymore, you know, um, except for like outlines and stuff. Not because they're not good, but because the stuff I get from Steve is that much better. Um, so Steve will give you a hundred dollars worth of free templates. And when you pay, we'll give you, we'll send you the code. Uh, Dylan will give you 40% off pickups for your guitar build. So that means, let me see if I can do this math here. I want to spend a hundred dollars on pickups. Now I get them from Dylan. They're only $60. I don't, you know what I mean? Whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that means that I now have $340 to spend on everything else from my guitar. So we're not going off of the, if, if you use one of these uh, codes, you know what I mean? Like don't count it as a hundred dollars, count it as $60. So it's like a cheat code. It's like a cheat code. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So Kiki is here. Hey Kiki. I wonder if TT's here. Hi TT. I don't think he is. I don't know. Um, uh, RVA guitar says that he just ordered a full set of strat templates from Steve. Can't wait. I, sir, I know that you will love them. Um, Dylan talks tone says we've had a few people order pickups for their $400 guitar with the discount. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it, it, it's super cool of Dylan to, to do that. And Steve to do that. And, and Brad Miller is also giving yep. hey, like Brad, $20 Dylan. off for, for some stuff. Um, uh, yeah. So get the, uh, uh, get the best stuff you can buy it on sale. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, by the way, if you're buying tools, that doesn't count. So if you're buying expensive router bits or you're buying pickup winding machines, that doesn't count. It's just, just stuff that goes in the guitar. Okay. If you, do you know who, um, um, uh, Doug Cower is Cower guitars? I do not. Well, Doug is, um, uh, I, I, I think that Doug and I are colleagues. Okay. Proteges. Uh, no, no. I mean, Doug is at a different part of his business than, than I am. He is further along than, than we are here he's, because he's been doing it longer. Um, and Doug builds beautiful, beautiful guitars. Anyway, the, uh, uh, when Chris and I first started doing this together, Chris and myself, we entered a guitar building contest that Doug Cower did. And it was, it was the same thing, a $400 ceiling, but you had to have a case and some other stuff. And, um, and it was only on uh, on like a uh, this website. Uh, I can't remember what it was. How long ago was this? This was years and years ago. Um, but it was really fun, and I thought that would be a neat thing to do um, for a guitar building contest. Now, next year's guitar building contest, I have all new stipulations that will blow your mind. Okay, it, it, I'm not going to tell you, but yeah, it, it's this year is. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sully the waters. Okay. This year. It's you have four hundred dollar ceiling to build a super cool guitar and win the money. Now that was the thing that Doug uh, Doug wasn't giving away a cash prize. Um, I can't remember what the what the award was, but um, uh, um, and actually Chris won that. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So um, uh, anyway, the um, uh, but the uh, this this four hundred dollar guitar building contest comes with a cash prize, a fat stack of cash, as it were. Um, now, you kind of got to send me a check or you got to deliver me cash somehow. You can't do it with PayPal. By when? Um, is, is the day that, of the is, thing. Yeah, oh, that's there, fine. Is there a cutoff? No, when you can no get cut, in? No, 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 no. You can get in up till the last day. Well, the last second. Yeah. Okay. I don't care. If, if, you, I didn't, I didn't if you have a guitar and $100, you, yeah, feel free. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm only doing cash I'm, or checks because I can't hand someone a fat stack of PayPal. And plus PayPal takes fees and shit like that. So we're not going to do that. So um, uh, I wish that there was a way to do it that made sense, but there isn't. So yeah. Yeah. How would you, so imagine this, you have the winningest guitar in the $400 guitar building contest. You walk out of there with a couple grand and you get to keep the guitar. Yeah. Plus, you challenge yourself to make a bunch of new cool stuff. Mm -hmm. How cool is that? All right. How many guys are actually coming here for it? I think most people are coming because well, it is. Are? Yeah. One of the things about it is, um, um, uh, it is is I know Sir David is coming. 
Yeah, I, I, the, the, the guitar has to be here. You can't just send pictures of your guitar. No, what I'm saying is, are most guys just shipping the guitar here and not I don't, showing up in person? I don't think so. I think most guys are coming, I okay. think. Last year, we had a handful of entries that the people um, just shipped them, and that worked That worked great. In fact, Sean Immenheiser uh, did that, and he won. Yeah. So anyway, um, Doc has a question, and it is, in fact... Did the Cower Contest challenge you in any way? Well, as a matter of fact, Don, it did. Um, it was the first time that Chris and I used what I call modern paint. We used Simtech sealer, urethane uh, color coat, uh, two-stage urethane color coat, and urethane top coat, um, uh, uh, catalyzing urethane top coat. Up till then, we had talked about doing it, but we never had. And we thought, let's do it on this one. Um, I actually, uh, uh, I kind of, I kind of pulled a snarky move and I, I, I went on the website where Doug was doing it. And I said, Doug, I've had a lot of fun with this contest, but since I'm a professional builder, I'm going to, I'm going to bow out of the, uh, cause mine would have like, it would have blown everybody away. Well, duh. Yeah. No, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a Billy Bo Jupiter jet. Um, fabric top with a DiMarzio super distortion in it. And it was badass. Yeah. And I had a guy make a bridge for me. It had Spurzel locking to, it was really, really cool. You can, you can still watch videos of that guitar being built. Um, it was probably seven years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's, there's pictures of the guitar that Chris built. He built a double neck. Um, yeah. And they were, they were really, really neat. So anyway, but yeah, it did challenge us. We wanted to, we figured let's do something that we don't normally do because, well, why not? And, um, and so we did. And, and I, I challenge you guys to do that stuff too, because I think that, I think that a guitar building contest should be a challenge. And I think that putting a bunch of arbitrary requirements on it makes it more fun for me to watch you guys squirm. So yeah. And, and figure out ways around that, that handicap. You know what I mean? All right. Let's see what else is going on. What else is going on with you, Mr. Jim, Mr. Uh, Jam? Oh, we get to, that was my youngest son's 28th birthday yesterday. Is that a fact? Mason. Yeah. So we're going to take him out to dinner tonight. Well, that sounds lovely. Where are you going to go? We're going to go to Saltgrass. The he, BK he, he Steakhouse. That. Oh, that's a good place. He yeah. likes that. All the guys went to uh, Saltgrass after the uh, the workshop on Sunday. I was I was too tired to go. But Chris and Brian and Raul and Doug and Dave and, and uh, um, um, Brian uh, all went to Saltgrass and had had a good meal there. So yeah. yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. Um. Other than that, I've just been hanging with you all week. It's been a lot of fun to do this too. By the way, I've seen some old school shit this week. You have seen some old school <laughs> and shit. And I always yeah. ask you, is that old school? Uh -huh. Yep. This is as old school as it gets. In fact, where's that guitar? That actually, let's oh, show there. that one. Yeah, that would, that's that. a you really old school. Thing. I'll go get it. Okay. This is kind of what we were looking at. So many, many, many years ago, more than tens of years ago, I, I used to do this thing where I would buy, I would buy guitars and I would, I'm not going to say fix them up, but I would do stuff to them that I had no business doing to them. And one of them is the, the one that you're about to see now. And it is, it is, I've forgotten all about this, but, um, uh, my friend Brett had this in his possession. And as you can see, it is, in fact, an BC Rich style, bitch style guitar. Um, this was not the body that came with the guitar, but this is the neck that came with the guitar. But that's not the headstock that came with the guitar. So what I did, many I, because I wanted to see if I could do it, I wanted to see if I could do a six string to three, a six on six in line, to three on a side conversion. And so that's what this is. So this started life as a, um, uh, like just an import BC rich, uh, like I think whatever their cheapest hunk of crap that they had at, you know, uh, guitar center. I think I got it used from guitar center for like $80. And, and I just, cause I wanted to see what I could do with it. So I, I changed the headstock from six on a side to three on a side and gave it that kind of, classic kind of BC rich style headstock. Um, and I think it worked pretty well. Um, then I, uh, I, I built a body for it, which is this one, which we, 
we'll be using some of this. This is actually a base size body. Mm -hmm. um, so I made this body for it and, um, and set the neck in. And then I did something that this was something that my, um, my mentor, Bruce Clay, Master Luthier used to do kind of, um, this is not what Bruce used to do, but this is not unlike what Bruce used to do. Uh, and that is glue in a neck that was designed to be screwed in. Um, and then I, I, I hogged out a giant section <laughs> That's my of, of the, of the, of the back of the guitar. Um, and I, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of a funny thing to do, the half, but moon. The half moon. So, um, yeah, so I, this, this was, uh, I, and I totally spaced out that we had made this, but, um, but we're, Everything that's old is new again, and therefore we are making BC riches. And you know why we got this? Why is that? Because the template uh -huh. we were originally going to use, we looked at it, and mm -hmm. we, we thought it was extremely thin and small. Yeah. It didn't look right. Um, and then there were comments that Sean's, um, did he make a warlock? A warlock, Yeah, yes. the warlock he made, um, the template kind of looked small, but until... You saw the three-dimensional wood on it. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of came to life and it came to size. You know, yeah. it looked right. Um, so we are wondering what this actually looked like in wood in real life. So thank, you know, Brett for letting us use this and uh, get our hands on it so we could see what it looked like. I'm pretty sure this just sort of is living in Brett's closet. Yeah. yeah. But at least we could see that, you know, it, the, the size, you know, it's it's fine. I have no idea why I put this cove around it, but but I did. And I love so. the old school uh, Texas Toast branding. Yeah this this is a this is a really old old guitar that um, well before there were any other Texas Toast guitars, there was this. Um, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of people. Come, yeah, I'm not fond of BC Rich selling, but I love that. <laughs> um, uh, it's all sorts of wrong, making it all sorts of right. Yeah, this thing is 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 absurd. And, um, and I, 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 I don't even, I couldn't even tell you when I made it probably 2010, maybe, maybe that early. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. So anyway, well, stay tuned in the coming weeks. Cause there's, <laughs> there's going to be a lot. So, so, more. so we've got, um, uh, I don't know. Who's the most famous BC rich bitch player. Uh, Susie Quattro. Um, yeah, I remember Aerosmith playing a lot of BC. Yeah, I, in the day. I think you're right. Um, I think I think um, uh, uh, I, th I think Aerosmith probably. Uh, Slash is certainly up there. Susie Quattro used to yeah. play a bunch of BC Rich stuff. Um, Neil Giraldo from Pat Benatar always did he? BC Rich. Okay. Um, uh, Doug Cook says Lita Ford. Oh, well, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, Kiss. Uh, yeah, lots of Lita Fords. Um, uh, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, I think, I think, I think the BC rich bitch is a neat shape. Um, there was talk of doing an eight string bass, mm -hmm. but I decided, nah, I don't want to do that. Yeah. I just, I just want to get this thing out of it. Although, you know what? We haven't, done, we're not done with it yet. We could still go eight. I have an eight string bridge. Yeah. It's not like it would be impossible to do. It would just be really time consuming. So what am I gonna do with this thing? This it's just good. It's just gonna live right there. Okay. There you go. All right. So, um, oh, Rick Derringer. Oh yeah. Thank you. you. Yes. Um. Uh, uh, Brian wants to know: Is that just an oh oh? Yeah, it's just it's just a router that puts that that cove in there, Brian. Yeah. Uh, Doc, an eight string bass is rad, and it's been a long time since I've had one. Um. Uh. I, I've, I've, I've talked, I've talked about making them more in the future. I'm actually building one for a, a local guy here. He's building an eight string Explorer base uh, with me. And that will be a fun one. Um, yeah. But, but I think that um, I think eight string and 12 string bases are really cool. I love them. And it's sort of like the idea if you, if you show up with that, you got to come correct. Yeah. Yeah. A la Tom Peterson, cheap trick. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, Van Shank Guitars wants to know how the acoustic build is coming along. Well, the acoustic build is kind of stalling in a lot of ways, but has 
a new has, has also has breathed new life into another project um, that died many, many years ago. Um, so we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. And um, yeah, it's funny when, when an electric guitar builder decides to build acoustic guitars, but has no time what they come up with. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, Sean joint says uh, the upstairs looks incredible. Oh, wait, the burst. The burst. What? The burst on that, that guitar, the one we just showed him. Oh, may, maybe. Well, Sean, what is that? Okay, I, I, Sean, thank you for thank you for that. The burst is was a that was one of Chris's very first. That was one of Chris Fesker's very early bursts. By the way, Did yeah, you know he, that he thought it was fairly amusing when he saw it. Mm -hmm. uh, what it looks like now. Yeah, and, yeah. Yep, it's all lacquer and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's all checked all the hell. Yeah. So. Anyway. Um, on the 10 string guitar or the 12 string bass, Brian Duncan. So it looks like there, there's, there's chatting that, that I'm not, I'm not privy to necessarily. So anyway, huh. so guys, we're almost done here. I want you to remember that there's another hour of good time, guitar, rock and roll talk um, uh, with uh, Dylan and his wife, Leslie at Dylan talks tone. I suspect they are going to talk about the rock and roll hall of fame nominees tonight. I saw something that Link Ray got inducted. I, I saw that Link Ray is on the list of, is it got inducted or is, is I, on the. I swore I saw that he got inducted, which I hope so because um, huge hero of mine. I think that I, I, I think that it, I know I saw Link Ray and a bunch of people who I don't know because I'm old. It's a crime that he's not in there right now. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of the forefathers, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, rumble. I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. Um, Hold on, wait. Let me see. Let's see what's coming in here. Uh, not inducted, but on the list of inductees. Oh, okay. So, yeah. He better get in. What are you going to do if he doesn't? I'm going to cry. Oh, you're not going to like, you're not going to run over and knock that horse off the so, building you know next what? door? Um, I think I, Dan Andreas put uh, that it was his birthday or, yeah, I think he put it up on Facebook. And I told a story about um, when I was an 18 wheeler, we backed up Link Ray two weeks before he passed away at the yeah. bluebird and he's it'd been a hero of mine forever and i was waiting down in the dressing room after we got done playing and i couldn't wait to meet him I'm like i'm finally gonna meet link yeah. i'm gonna meet link ray yeah. and his nasty wife comes down and she goes everybody out of here and i said what do you mean i want to meet yeah. link she yeah. said nobody's meeting link no pictures wow. nobody's meeting link and she threw us he was so it. old flash photography not allowed yeah but she Apparently, I heard the story that they were writing uh, an autobiography on him, and they didn't want any pictures, oh. anything. It was all to be her deal of oh, what went in that okay. book, and um, she wouldn't even let us meet him, get his autograph, anything. That stinks. Um, it did stink. It kind of soured the whole thing. But then the guy went on stage and put on, could be my number one concert I've ever seen in my life. Wow mind-blowing we should talk about your the best concert you've ever seen that would day. be that would be great that'd be a fun thing to talk about yeah yeah yep. and the story behind it i mean the old man two weeks before he passes away he comes out with a strat mm -hmm. and a marshall half stack he walks up to the half stack with his fanny pack on full leather mm -hmm. you know and he dimes yeah. everything <laughs> and the place just went wild yeah, yeah. yeah. it was great yep that's cool, man. Yeah, that's super cool. We need uh, uh, we need we need Crin to here to do uh, to talk about his favorite show. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. We need we need we need a panel of experts. I'd like to know what Crin's uh, favorite show was. I happen to know, but I'm not going to tell you. Oh really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of yeah. rude. It is, but <laughs> it is it is kind of rude. But when you hear it, you'll be like, oh, that's why he's not telling me. So okay. yeah, actually, I don't know. Okay. But I know it. But I think I know what he's going to say. <laughs> It'll be something about this girl he worked with at Dairy Queen, I think. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, I'd like to thank the sponsors of our channel, Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. Guys, if you're in the area, the Denver metro area, please check out the Legacy Shop, uh, Flipside Music on Acoma Street. And um, Dylan and Ike and all the guys will take care of all of your guitar 
and amplifier and effects and string and uh, those little things that push the pins in. They've got all that stuff oh, and cool. more. And um, if you uh, if you are willing to wait, you might want to come check out the destination spot, which is going to be open. They're thinking this summer now, possibly. Oh, really? I, I heard I heard from from uh, Joy that she said that Ike was saying that they got permits and they're ready to start. Oh, I didn't permit for the concrete. Okay, oh, so it's a step in the right direction. It is absolutely. Hey, Zim's Guitars is here. Hey, Zim, uh, how are you doing? Thank you for doing those videos uh, for us, my friend. That was very cool of you. Um, uh, and I, I I thoroughly enjoyed them. And we watched your video on the BC Rich Bitch Double Neck just the other day. We did. Yeah. For reference. Yes, for reference material. Um, okay. So, uh, so yeah, Ike and the guys at Flipside Music, the great American guitar store. And if you're not in the Denver Metro area, they're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week online. Check them out and tell them that, uh, Matt and JJJ sent you. Yep. I would also like to thank Steve at Maximum Guitar Works. Um, we've been using Steve's templates for as long as Steve's been making templates. And, uh, we used them all last week, all this week, and I cannot recommend them any more than I do. Um, uh, I would also urge you guys to come out to one of our workshops that we do uh, with Steve uh, or even some stuff that we do without Steve, but uh, we've got some stuff happening in uh, the, the $9,000 strat workshop has some spaces available and I can't remember when is, I think it's September. It's October. I, I can't remember. I think it's October. Um, it's all on the website, but you guys can go over to Steve's uh, factory yeah. and watch your your guitar being being machined and then come over to my shop wind pickups with dylan do all the do all the fretting do all the um uh, all the all the paint work all the everything and walk out of here with a boutique heirloom quality instrument that is um that is rivaled only by by makers that you have heard of want to know how i can make such an outrageous claim How's that? because I know the guys who make the guitars for the O&M manufacturers that you've heard of. They are, in fact, Steve at Maximum Guitar Works and Dylan from Dylan Talk Stone. So um, did you know that I was actually featured in, uh, uh, my name was featured in uh, Vintage Guitar Magazine with a Newman Guitars the other day? Do tell. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there was it was an article about Newman Guitars and um, and how we had built a, a handful of a, a ghost build guitars for them actually i did know that and i thought that was that was really, pretty neat i don't really know what cool. to do with that information but yeah, it, it's, it's cool feather in, feather in your um, cap, man. yeah um the, the 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 coolest thing about it was that uh the guy who runs newman guitars now said that he wanted to work with luthiers that he thought that ted newman jones would have wanted to work with now i don't know if ted newman jones knew me but i thought that was a really neat thing to say so yeah yeah um but anyway uh, uh, so, and of course I would like to thank Dylan from Dylan talks tone and Dylan pickups guys. If you want to uh, get your own set of Dylan pickups, I guarantee you that Dylan himself winds them all. And if you use the link in the description below, you get, um, I think you get 10% off and it, it's the only way to get a pickup with someone's name on it that, you know, for a fact that guy wound. I'm not saying that, you know, insert name of famous pickup winder here didn't wind it, but I know Dylan winds all of those pickups. So he's a cool dude too. and he's a cool guy too. Yeah. Um, let's see who else would we like to thank Jim? Um, I know, but I, I'm wondering if you know, anything. how about, uh, Bitterroot guitars? How about Bitterroot guitars? <laughs> John and Cheryl from Bitterroot guitars are, have been longtime supporters of Texas toast guitars. And if you use code T X T O A S T at checkout, you get 15% off your entire order from Bitterroot guitars. All of the truss rods that we use here, all of the truss rods we, we use this week. Uh, this week, all of the um, uh, all of the carbon fiber stiffening rods that we use came from Bitterroot Guitars. Um, uh, so yeah, so Bitterroot Guitars guys, check them out. Link in the description below. Hey Matt, do you like local craft beer? Yes, as a matter of fact, I do. Hey, then why don't we thank Chris and Dina from oh, Odyssey Beer Odyssey Works? Odyssey Beer Works. Oh, your head's blocking it. The great American beer works. Thank you, Chris and Dina, for all of your help and support and uh, keeping us, uh, they, they know what it looks like, <laughs> and keeping us uh, good and lubed up in the evening hours. We, it, work around the shop is very taxing, and it's nice to have a cold one after a day worth of work in the shop. When power tools are done. When power tools are done, yeah. Yep. Let me take a quick super chat from Robbox. Uh, hi, Steve. How you doing? 
Um, I hate to be like, oh, son of a gun, Steve. I, I, I've been meaning to get back to you and I haven't. I will do so. I will do so, sir. I promise you. And I, you're, I, I hate to do that to you. Chris even wrote a note in Staples of my body. And I'm, I'm the worst at getting back to people. So, I, Steve, I will get back to you tomorrow morning. How about that? With pictures. Um, uh, and, Jim, you're going to be here. So you'll force me to do that. Yes, you'll remind me to do that. It on my forehead. All right, good. Um, uh, bu- 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 um, I would like to thank uh, Dan and Calvin at Tonewood Experts for providing us with super excellent uh, wood that we use in all of our builds and all of the workshop builds too. Um, if you guys saw Raul and Brian's tops, they are so choice. I was going to say uh-huh. they are super choice. They are. So- if you, if you, if you're wondering where to get a good chunk of maple for a Les Paul top, I urge you to go to Dan and Calvin at Tonewood Experts. And if you use code Texas Toast 15, you get 15% off some choice quality level. that's choice that is so choice um i would also like to thank um uh, 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 uh um nigel, nigel forstner at oh, forstner yeah. guitars in queensland australia he's got a couple of super cool books they're ebooks they're fun to read they talk about um uh uh making money in a woodworking shop and making money building guitars they're actually very very excellent I'm I'm uh, working through his uh, his Luthery book right now, but um, link in the description below, and you guys can check out Nigel Forstner's books, and um, and tell him Matt from Texas so sent you. Tell him Jim sent you too. How about our good friend Brad Guitar Miller at Pedal to the Metal. Pedal to the Metal Guitars? That's right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Um, Brad is uh, um, makes some of the finest um, metal pieces that you can get for your uh, your your build, and he's even willing to offer them to you at a discount for your four hundred dollar guitar building fund stuff and last but not least our brand newest sponsor Stuart mcdonald uh thank you to Stu mac for helping us out you know all of the toolkits that we use here at the workshops are all loaded with Stu mac tools as of right now it's every tool i use this week there there's a bunch of good stuff in there somebody asked me if i would do a review of the shop stand and guys i don't know if um if you're aware of what the shop stand is but i i i've requested one and um, so hopefully the shop stand from Stu Mac is coming. I haven't heard back from my contact say, yet. I don't know that one. It's like a, it's just, it's like a little, well, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a stand to do guitar work on that. Oh, yeah. Cool. A workstation. Yeah. All right. um, I have to pay a lot of money every month for this great big shop. So I don't need a, a little work. So I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't need one, but I asked them to send me one for T and E and then I would send it back to them or I would buy it if, if, cool. yeah. Um, if it was something that I needed. So, um, yeah, so Stuart McDonald is uh, very excellent. And guys, if you use the link in the description below, I get a little taste of everything that you buy from Stu Mac, which is helps me out quite a bit. Um, so uh, thanks for watching, you guys. We will see you tomorrow for a little reveal. It's not going to be a total reveal. Smash that like button. Yeah, Kiki. Yeah, Kiki and TT. Yeah, the Kaloje boys are in yeah, the can house. I say, can I say hi to my sister-in-law, Cindy? You just did, but let's do it. Okay. Let's do it formally for real. Hi, right, Cindy. Keep fighting. Love you. Yeah, Cindy. It's good. It was, it, I was, you know, your family is so nice. It was so great to meet them and hang out with them. And, they love you too. Yeah. I mean, not Kiki, but no, everybody, no, no, no I, no, I, I should, I shouldn't tease. I think, I think I hurt Kiki's feelings. I didn't mean to. Kiki's, man. No, he's, I, 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 I that guy is hilarious. He I, is hilarious. He keeps me in stitches. Yeah. I have to change my pants. I pee him so <laughs> often when I'm around it. So, yeah. Anyway. You guys, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. We will see you tomorrow for a quick little reveal. And we'll be back on Sunday for our regularly scheduled um, uh, Sunday video. I have no idea what it's going to be about. But I think it's going to be about a super cool tool that I just got from Stu Mac. And nobody else in the world has one. Oh, wow. Nobody has one but me. Stay tuned. So stay tuned. All right, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. And have a great evening, everybody.